Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Raul Mencia, a PhD student from, from the University of Oviedo in Spain, and I'm here to present a joint work with Maria Sierra, Carlos Mencia, and Ramiro Varela. In this work, we uh, faced with a problem which was proposed recently in the year 2014, and this problem is very similar to the traditional job sub scheduling problem with the differences that there are arbit arbitrary uh, precedence relations between uh, tasks and that uh, the tasks require an operator skill to assist them. Uh, our main contribution in, uh, contributions in this uh, work were solving methods for, for this problem. In this uh, presentation, we're going to follow this structure. First, I'll give uh, the, the definition of the problem a disjunctive graph model for it, uh, and then the, I'll go with the solving methods, and uh, to finish I'll give the experimentation and conclusions and future work. In this problem we're given a set of machines, a set of operators, and a set of tasks or operations. Each uh, operation has a processing time, and it requires a machine and an operator skilled to assist uh, that task. Uh, also, we're given a task graph that specifies the precedence relations between the tasks. And as decision variables for each task, we have to assign uh, the starting time of the task and an assistant operator. And we have to do so uh, satisfying a set of constraints and uh, uh, trying to minimize the maker span, which is the uh, completion time of uh, all tasks. Uh, the constraints are shown uh, there. Tasks must be processed in a, in a way that uh, it doesn't violate the order in the task graph. Each task must be uh, assisted by an operator for its whole duration, and the, and the operator must be uh, skilled to assist it. Uh, then two tasks that uh, use the same machine or are assisted by the same operator cannot overlap, and no preemption is allowed. This means that when a task, a task starts to process, you can't stop it. Has to, to process for its whole duration. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the disjunctive graph model. Uh, a problem instance can be represented by a directed graph with a set of uh, of nodes uh, that represent the tasks, as well as some fixed nodes to represent the start of the schedule, the end of the schedule, and the operators. Also, we have uh, a set of uh, Disjunctive, ar disjunctive arcs with, uh, that um, connect the uh, tasks that require the same machine, uh, a set of uh, operator arcs that connect the uh, tasks that, that may be assisted by the same operator, the, a set of conjunctive arcs, which are the arcs of the task graph, and we have also arcs to connect the fixed nodes with the, with the rest of the graph. Now, we can build a solution graph as a, as a, a cyclic uh, subgraph of the uh, disjunctive graph uh, that expresses uh, partial orders uh, for machines and operators. And we have here an, an example of a solution graph. As we can see, we have uh, uh, here these six tasks are the, the real tasks. And then we have uh, fixed nodes also for uh, the start of the schedule, the end of the schedule, and each operator. In this case, we have three operators. And then we can see that the tasks that require the same machine have a, a, a disjunctive arc, as we like that, like that red one, and that the tasks that require that use the same operator in this, in this solution use the uh, have a, uh, an operator arc uh, connecting connecting them. And we can also represent the solutions uh, with Gantt charts. Uh, here uh, we have two Gantt charts but, uh, that represent the same solution with the difference that the first Gantt chart do it with respect to the operators and the second Gantt chart do it with respect to, to the machine. Uh, now I'm going to talk about resolving methods. Uh, we propose the SOGNT algorithm that generalizes the GNT algorithm proposed by Gifford and Thompson for the classic uh, job sub scaling problem. This is an iterative algorithm. Uh, at each uh, iteration, um, a task is, is scheduled, and we do so by assigning a pair of starting time and a, an assisting operator from a set of, of options X. This set of options X will, will be created by uh, 
uh, can be created, obtained in different forms, and the and it gives uh, they give rise to different search spaces. I'll talk now a little later about how we create this this set of options uh, X. This is the this the general structure of the algorithm. Uh, at every moment, we're going to to have a set of uh, the set of tasks A. Uh, this set cont uh, contains a task that can be a scheduled next. At the start of each iteration, uh, we create the set of options A, which co is composed of pairs of tasks that belongs that belong to the set of task uh, tasks uh, A, and each operator is killed to a system. After that, the set of options X is created as a subset of the set of options A, and uh, from this set, we choose uh, uh, the option that is going to be scheduled in, in this iteration in a non-deterministic way. Uh, then we update the different uh, structures of the of the algorithm, and here we see the. Uh, I'm going to talk about the set of options A, uh, uh, X. We we have three different options, uh, A, A prime, and B. A prime is a subset of the set of options A, a which is which I have already talked about, and B is a subset of A prime. Uh, all of them give rise of these uh, sets uh, give rise to dominant search spaces, which means that at least one optima solution can be found in them. And I'm going to explain how to get uh, how to build this uh, set of options with an, with an example. Here we can see uh, uh, that in a given operation, uh, uh, in a given iteration, we have in the set A uh, these three options. This is all the options that can be scheduled next. Now, to build a prime, we look for the for the tasks task that can uh, end uh, first, uh, and uh, we uh, look to the completion to its completion time, T star, and the set of options a prime will be composed of the uh, of the of, of those options that can start before the this time, and this in this example we have uh, two options. And then, to create the set of options B, we look at the at the option that gave us the, the C star, and we uh, create the set of options B as the uh, with the tasks, not with the options that uh, use the same operator or uh, the same machine. And in this case, we only have one. Uh, so in this example, we have three options in the t in the set A. Two options in the set A prime and one option in the set B. Now I'm going to talk about the generic algorithm that we use uh, to solve this problem. We use the the SOG and T algorithm in the decoding part of the algorithm. I'll, I'll tell you how later. First, the coding schema: uh, a chromosome is composed of uh, composed of two sequences, the task sequence, which is a a mm, conventional permutation where uh, each task is represented by its number in the in the in the permutation, and then for uh, operators we have the operator sequence, with it, which is a permutation with repetition. Here, the, in the decoding algorithm, uh, when in a given iteration we have the set of options X that we have to uh, decide with which option we are going to uh, schedule next. We decide uh, which one uh, looking at the algorithm, at the at the chromosome. Excuse me. Uh, we are going to choose the leftmost, and for the operator, we are going to choose the uh, the one that is closer to it. For instance, in a ca in in the case that the the task uh, the, the operator that is closest to the to the task is not skilled to assist it, like in this case, as you can see, task one uh, is uh, is can only be assisted by operator one and operator three. But here we have uh, the closest operator, uh, operator two. So we look uh, in a circular way to uh, for the um, operator that is a skill to assist it and that is closest to it. In this case, would be it would be one. So the task one uh, is uh, assisted by the operator one. Uh, we also propose a coding back option. Uh, in this option, uh, this option means that. Uh, um, after we have evaluated the the, the schedule, we, we can um, uh, rewrite the chromosome so it's uh, so the tasks tasks appear in the same order that they were scheduled. 
as you can see here, this solution can be represented by this or that uh, chromosome, which are different, but in this one, the tasks are in the, in the order that they were scheduled. And the operator's allocation uh, is also coded back into, into the chromosome. As crossover, we make we use a double uh, sequence uh, variant of the order crossover. In this uh, in this crossover uh, operator, we uh, take uh, two cutting points randomly, and we uh, and the offspring inherits uh, all the symbols from uh, between those two cutting points and the relative position of the rest of the. Uh, symbols from the other parent. We think that this is a, a good option because uh, with this uh, uh, operator, uh, offsprings can inherit uh, uh, important characteristi characteristics of uh, a schedule like uh, which operator, uh, like operator preferences, or uh, relative orderings between tasks. As mutation, we we have two different. Uh, uh, operators that we use with uh, uh, 0 0.5 probability. Uh, first, we have single mutation, which uh, swaps two s consecutive positions uh, at random. And on the other hand, we, ha we have operator mut uh, mutation, which changes uh, the operator of a task uh, randomly. And here is the general algor genetic algorithm structure. It is a very conventional structure. At the, th at the start of each iteration, we organize the the chromosomes uh, in pairs, into pairs at random. Then we use the the operators that I have talked about, and at the end, we, uh, we make a tournament selec uh, selection among every every two parents and their children to uh, to generate the next population. Now I'm going to talk about the experimentation. Uh, we use two sets of instances. The first instance, uh, set of instances was generated uh, uh, der uh, deriving from the, uh, using the uh, uh, DFT10 instance from the uh, classic uh, classical job subscaling problem. And what we did was uh, taking different m numbers of operators, different probabilities that an operator may assist a task, may have the skill to assist the task. And from each combination, we generated five instances. And uh, on the other hand, we have another set of uh, instances. Uh, in this set of instances was proposed in the paper that proposed this, this problem. Uh, and these are 50 instances organized in five groups. They are very interesting because they were created uh, inspiring themselves in the, the topology of, uh, of a task graph uh, of a real problem. So yeah. Also, here we have the parameters of the genetic algorithm. And uh, the metrics that we have is uh, we uh, measure the best and the average make span uh, of 10 runs for each instances, uh, instance considering the coding back and not considering the, the coding back option. Um, and the objectives, object, objectives that we have are uh, analyzing the quality and the stability of the solutions by, by its uh, SOG and T set, analyzing the convergence of our algorithm evaluate which option is better to code back or not to code back and compare the our algorithms with the state of the art uh, first we generated a uh, uh, a thousand uh, random schedules using each uh, set x a a prime and b and we can see that uh, a prime and b are pretty even although a prime is a little better than uh, than b but the result yield yielded by A prime are way worse. So from now on, we're only going to look at uh, uh, make more tests with the sets A, A prime and B. And here we have the, uh, a graphic to show the convergence of the algorithm. We can see in this uh, um, in this graphic that the cutting back option is better for both sets. Here is uh, A prime with cutting back and B with uh, with cutting back, and the other one are B and A and A prime without uh, the cutting back option on. So from now on, we're going to do the rest of the tests with the with the cutting back option on. Here we have a table uh, to compare the sets, uh, the the results yielded by the genetic algorithm with the sets A prime and B. Uh, 
uh, we use the the, ta the the instances uh, derived from the FT10 uh, instance, and uh, we see that for every set, uh, the uh, the generic algorithm yields a better result with uh, the A prime set. Although we also we can also see that uh, it takes it a little bit more time. But also I, I want to say that in other experiments that we did, given it the same the same amount of time, given the two options have the same amount of time, A prime was still better than, than B. And here we have a, a comparison with the state of the art. Uh, the state of the art uh, is the, the, the paper in, in which this paper was, this uh, problem was proposed. Uh, they, in this paper they proposed the, this method, MSB DOS, D O S. <coughs> And this method, in this method, uses a simple uh, bottleneck uh, heuristic to decide the other order of the task, and another heuristic to to decide which operator assists its, ta its task. And we can see that we uh, we achieve better so better results than than this method. Uh, we do and we do so in much less time than this method uh, uses. And now uh, we're going with the conclusions and the future work. We can conclude that the GNT algorithm can be extended to solve this problem. Uh, we have built a generic algorithm that uses uh, SOGNT as a decoder for uh, uh, for the algorithm, and we th we uh, we think that the success of the proposed method relies um, both on the SOGNT and the, gener the and the quality of the generic algorithm. And now, as future work, we plan to to define local search algorithms to uh, to solve this problem. And also, we have uh, we want to to define different objective functions. As for instance, perhaps think of a version of the total flow time for this this problem. And also, it would be interesting to try to tackle this problem with another type of of method, like constraint programming or heuristic search. This is all. Thank you very much. Excuse me? Yes. Yes, uh, we we measure the, um, the 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 method stability by measuring the dispersion of the solutions that we measure. So the the less the dispersion, the lower the dispersion, the more stable the method is. Dispersion. Well, we we take the the solution uh, solutions of. Uh, we calculate the average, and then we also calculate the CV of of the of the solution that we get with this with this solution. Yeah. Yes. If if we have every task and there are uh, operators for to assist every task then, then yes it's it's the same than uh, a, jo a traditional job shop uh, we didn't test this this algorithm on 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 job shop instances we we generated instances that are similar that use uh, uh, as in a start the uh, uh, job shop uh, instance but none of these instances can uh, have Operators that can assist have uh, tasks tasks that can be assisted by every operator or, or, not, or anything like that. We think that this this 
the, the arbitrary precedence uh, relations are uh, more similar to what we see in the real world. They are more, we can model more uh, practical situations uh, with it. And uh, we, that's the reason that we find this problem interesting because uh, from a practical point of view, it's, it's uh, interesting. Yes, we, we, you, we all agree. Yes. Yes, I mean, th this, uh, the, this is a, a the, the multi mode uh, resource const constraint project scaling problem. Uh, is the generalization of this? Is a generalization of this? This is a case of that problem, but we think that there isn't much work on that problem done yet, and that uh, this uh, this problem has uh, enough entity just to research on it for its practical application. Thank you.